Stanford University. What we found was that watching um, significant amounts of television or video and spending significant amounts of time online, large amounts of time online, was negatively associated with a wide range of social and emotional development. These 8 to 12 year olds who spend a great deal of time online, watching TV, etc., show less social and emotional development, feel less good about themselves, more susceptible to peer pressure, more uh, friends who their parents think are bad influences, etc. The one curative is face-to-face -face communication. Heavy amounts of face-to-face -face communication seem to, are very strongly positively associated with all these good things. Resistance to peer pressure, uh, feeling better about themselves, etc. And if you have high amounts of face-to-face -face communication, you can then also have high amounts of these other forms of communication and do just fine. The other result is multitasking. Kids who multitask frequently are also very bad, show negative effects. And we think that has to do with a sort of chronically distracted view of the world, which affects them even in understanding emotions. They're so distracted, even when there aren't technology around, that they don't get the opportunity to learn the critical social and emotional skills, which come from looking at other people, thinking hard about their face, their voice, their, their body posture, their emotions. Because they're distracted, they're missing that stuff. Combine that with the use of these other media so they can get the stuff, the good stuff, the emotional stuff, and they're essentially have tremendous handicaps. The one other thing I'll say is, while not directly from this survey, we have reason to believe that this sort of attention to faces, which comes very early in life, also leads to better practicing attention, which plays out not just face to face, but in school. So teachers come to me all the time saying, kids have it very difficult to pay attention. And I think it's because the way, we don't have direct evidence, I want to be clear, this is a theory, not based directly on research. The way you learn to pay attention first when you were young is through other people. That's the practice. It's not from looking at the environment. The environment in 21st century suburbia is not all that interesting or attentive a place. So the real way you learn not just to attend to emotion, but to attend to pay attention in school, in the workplace, is through all that practice and all that importance comes from practicing face-to-face -face emotional things. From the point of view of parents and kids and adults, there should be much, much, much greater attention paid to the importance of face-to-face, -face, really looking at someone else. In fact, there's an amazing finding now, uh, babies breastfeeding. <laughs> while their mothers are watching TV, are looking at the TV instead of the mother. That, to me, and I don't blame mothers, it's, I assume I've never done it, but I assume it's boring, etc. But that's got to matter. That's got to matter a lot, because all our theories of emotional attachment have something to do, not completely, but have something to do with the early bonding. But that's not happening if you have media. It's one thing to be aware of. As your kid grows up, that old-fashioned saying of look at me when I speak to you should come back. Yes, it was annoying for me as a kid. Yes, it is annoying. But it's annoying for an important reason. It's hard work. But it's a hard work that leads to incredibly positive outcomes. Just as if I say to you, exercise, you go, well, it's hard work. we will say, well, there are these outcomes. Why we've accepted that in the exercise domain, which we should, but not in the social domain really baffles me. And I think the reason was we used to have so much interaction face to face that it didn't really matter. The point was, what the heck else was I doing? I didn't have an, a phone, I didn't have an iPad, I didn't have all these, I didn't have three TV, you know, TV in my room, etc. So I had plenty of face to face interaction. Now that I don't, I think that's hugely important. So I think at the practical realm, encouraging that particularly encouraging the expression of negative emotions. The world of children today 
is a world of positive emotions. Not in themselves, I wish it were, but the world they're exposed to. The amount of positive feelings expressed versus negative feelings online. Much more positive. And in fact, there was a recent study showing that you're more likely to get a like clicked if you write something, a positive feeling than a negative feeling. Powerful stuff. So what do you learn? You learn, get stop talking about all that negative stuff. The faces on Facebook, all positive. Understandably. But what that means is when you live online, you live in a world where it seems like everyone's happy. If that were so, fine. But it's not so. Kids are experiencing negative emotions. Kids are, as a, but not getting practice in dealing with them. And as a result, we're seeing much higher levels of kids being unable to regulate and manage their emotional control. That's serious because we know that the ability to emotion regulate, uh, Professor James Gross over here in psychology, has shown the ability to regulate your emotions, not, not feel bad, but to understand, manage, and regulate your emotions is an enormously powerful predictor of um, emotional health, physical health, success, intellectual performance. If you can't manage your emotions and the online world is giving you no practice in that. Because what it's teaching you is, be happy. Which if you really were happy would be okay, but you're not, you can't be. That isn't how life is. No practice in negative, no practice in expressing negative emotions. So when kids are upset, they lack the vocabulary, they lack the ability. They also lack the ability to see it in others. Not because they're dumb, but because they're just not practicing and getting the feedback they need. So, understanding this, we're now actually looking at working with people in psychology on fMRI. What parts of the brain are being affected when you multitask? Do you actually pay attention? Are you good at detecting emotion? We're doing studies on the ability to detect emotion in these different age groups. These are hugely, hugely important for parents who are increasingly distracted, myself included, who increasingly are expected to be on their email, phone, text, 24-7 forcing themselves to not just be with other kids, but to look them in the eye is important. One of my favorite examples is I was invited to someone's house for dinner and they said, we have this religious rule that at dinner, everybody is at the dinner table because we know the research on the importance of that for kids. And I said, you are right. That is just so damn important. I'm really glad you're doing that. I'd love to join you for dinner. So dinner starts. And every 10 minutes, the father's getting an email from work, which he's not reading, but you know, he's sort of going, excuse me, and he's not spending the whole 10 minutes. Uh, two of the kids at the table got in an argument about some baseball statistics, so what did they do? They looked it up, and then while they were on the site, they started looking at other things, and the dinner degenerated. And I said to the, the person at the end, I said, you know, that was, a, I, I truly believe in the virtue of people sitting together at the dinner table. I said, but it's not the wood of the table that somehow magically transmits social and emotional and intellectual development. It is, in fact, the rich engagement among humans talking about various topics, carrying on an extended conversation, learning to pay attention where the magic comes from. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.